Dotted friends, recently we have passed through a very bad phase of the pandemic of COVID-19. We have lost so many friends, family members, and doctors too. We have lost some eminent homeopaths. So today, from this platform, our heartfelt condolences to all the families who have lost their dear ones from Parul University. But the adversities cannot stop the progress. Keeping this in mind, we have continued with our online classes, with our practicals, videos of practicals, as well as we have continued with these series of webinars. With the motivation of our dynamic president, Dr. Devanshu Patel, and the motivation of Dr. Komal Patel, the director of Ayush Colleges of Parul University, and with the support of the core committee of Parul University, made up of all four principals of the homeopathic colleges of Parul University. Dr. Purav Desai, the principal of Jawaharlal Nehru Homeopathic Medical College, Dr. Panda Sir, the principal of Parul Institute of Homeopathy and Research, Dr. Hitarth Mehta, the principal of Rajkot Homeopathic Medical College, and myself, Dr. Hina Rawal, principal of Ahmedabad Homeopathic Medical College. We together, we have come up with another webinar in the series of webinar conducted right from last April. That is April 2020. Today, we are glad to have with us a very eminent homeopath, Dr. Himan Shurat, sir. Sir has done his MD in Organon. Sir was the professor in the Department of Organon of Medicine and in charge principal at Chandola Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, Rudrapur, Uttarakhand. He has also worked as homeopathic medical officer under NRHM scheme in PHC. He was co-investigator in research project, project on a study on the effectiveness of homeopathic bowel nozits in the treatment of cervical spondylosis on the basis of stool cultural report, which was conducted at Ch Abhin Chandra Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, Bhubaneswar, under the sponsorship of Department of Indian System of Medicine and Homeopathy, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Sir has served as a resource person and program coordinator at various programs, has given many radio interviews and programs on awareness of homeopathy and other medical topics. He has attended and conducted various training programs like community-based three days training program for ASHA on disaster management sponsored by Department of Health and Family Welfare, five days training program on disaster, disaster management for the Yuvak Mangal Dal and Mahila Mangal Dal by the government of Uttarakhand. He is examiner at various universities his, he has actively participated in different extracurricular activities like debates and has won national awards at the competitions. He is the examiner at various universities, have actively participated in different extracurricular activities like NCC, Naval Wing, NSS, literally acti activities. He is the life member and resource person of Indian Institute of Homeopathic Physician and life member of Indian Red Cross of Rashtriya. Pariyavaran Pradrushan Suraksha Samiti. He is a consultant at various uh, committees and he has done research work also. Sir has published two important books in the subject of Organon. And so here today we present Sir for his webinar. Please welcome Dr. Raj Sir. Namaste. Welcome Dr. Himanshu Sir. Namaskar, madam. Welcome to everybody. Now I am going to present the topic, nature of chronic diseases and their treatment. Should I start now, madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can start, sir. Okay. Sir, we are, can't, we are not able to hear you properly. Yes, I am starting now. Am I audible? Uh, Am I audible? Yes, yes, uh, sir. sir uh, yes, sir. Voice. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, now you are uh, audible, sir. Okay. So, my topic is nature of chronic diseases and their treatment. Prior to the 
development of the concept of chronic disease, law of similia was prevalent. And Hahnemann was going on treating the different diseases by the application of law of similia. And a time came when he could not find response in many diseases. He frequently failed to cure many chronic diseases. That led him to find out what is the cause behind such failure. This obliged him to do vivid study of the different case records of the failure cases. He found that three chronic myogenes are responsible behind these causes of failure. So he conducted this research from the year 1816-17 till 1828. When the mature fruit came to his mind, he published it. By that time, he was pretty old. So there was chance of his death. So as the sir, mature excuse, fruit... Sir, uh, excuse me, your PPT is not visible. Perhaps you have uh, made it... Uh... Uh, I will show the screen. I am giving the introductory thing. Okay, now. okay, okay. okay. Uh, Continue, sir. Then I will show it. So, the uh, he found out the chronic margins are responsible for those cases where he was failing. So, he discovered the theory of chronic disease that he had communicated to the world in the year 1820. So, the first edition of chronic diseases was come to public in the year 1828. So, why he had not published the uh, his research work prior to that, the cause was that the fruit of his research was premature by that time. So, when he became satisfied with his research, he communicated to the world. But as in his pretty old ways, there was chance of his death. So, prior to communicating to the world, he had given communicated it to his two pupils so that by chance if he would be died then the knowledge and experience would be shared to the public by his pupils. Now I am going to the details of the nature of chronic diseases and their treatment. Nature of chronic diseases. Homeopathy is considered to be superior to any allopathy. Sir, please make it in a, sorry to interrupt, please make it in a presentation mode. Uh, sir? Uh, please click on the presentation mode, sir. Aapka screen, aapka jo PPT hai, wo full screen nahi hai. So, isko kaise karna hai? Thoda start karu. Ho gaya? Is it now? Sir, उसके बाजू में ही है देखिए आप वो 41% के बाजू में एक बटन है उस पे क्लिक कर दीजिए 40 उसके बाजू में उसके बाजू में 41 के साइड लेफ्ट हैंड साइड यस 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 थैंक यू ओके सो होम्योपैथी इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी सुपीरियर टू एनी एलोपैथिक मेजर ट्रीटिंग एक्यूट डिजीज एपिडेमिक डिजीज एंड स्पोराडिक फीवर्स वेनरल डिजीजेस आर आल्सो रेडिकली क्योर्ड बाय होम्योपैथी विदाउट एनी सीक्वेल the, there are several bad effects of allopathic treatment. The medicines like nauseous mixtures, manifold baths, sudorifics, salivating remedies, painkilling narcotics, and injections administered in large doses, and methods like fomentation, fumigation, blistering, plasters, abductories, fontanelles, laxatives, leeches, copying, and starving treatment applied in greater magnitude either aggravate the original disease and make the vital force weak, or new diseases appear instead of the former, which are far worse and more incurable, even leading to death. It is the same fundamental disease taking various forms and new diseases are added due to the improper use of the ingredient medicine. So that is the bad effect of allopathic treatment. Good effect of homeopathy treatment on the other side is in homeopathy. On the other hand, chronic diseases are cured in natural way of treatment in a short time by smallest doses of suitable remedies administered on the basis of perceptible symptoms in the patient which have been proved as to their pure true effect. The patient is fully healed without weakening his strength. Treatment of latent and fully developed sura. If a disease is not too much inveterate or too much mismanaged by allopathy, then it is cured by small doses of similar symptom producing homeopathic remedy within a considerable time. So this group belongs the diseases resulting from sura not yet fully developed 
which when treated with the non antiseptic medicines is brought to its previous latent state but the diseases which raised from fully developed sora require antiseptic medicine factors exciting sora gross error in diet taking cold rough wet cold or stormy weather approach of autumn winter and winter spring violent exertion of body and mind severe external injury very sad event repeated fright grief sorrow repeated vexation often causes in a weakened body the reappearance of one or more of the elements which seem to have been already overcome this new condition was often aggravated by some quite new uh, concomitant uh, which are more obstinate this usually happens in diseases resulting from fully developed sora the most fitting non antiseptic remedies so the new disease would again bring the patient to a better state the former disease which have been removed when re appears again then the repetition of the medicine which was uh, serviceable in the um uh, which are serviceable um, in the past um, in, in, uh, serviceable initially becomes ineffective later on even under the operation of the best adapted non antiseptic homeopathic remedy and even where the mode of living be quite correct the new symptoms of the disease would be added which could be removed inadequately and imperfectly yet those new symptoms were at times not at all improved where some of the above mentioned obstacles hindered the cure factors elevating sora some various occurrences a pleasant journey a favorable season a dry uniform temperature may bring recovery in the patient if the patient overlooks some possible moderate ailment might consider himself healthy but such recovery never last long the best selected non antiseptic homeopathic remedies given in most appropriate doses become less effective the oftener they were reappear repeated as time proceeds even while the mode of living being correct with punctual observation of direction there appears more threatening and more troublesome symptoms the chronic disease grows worse from year to year role of non antiseptic remedies in chronic diseases when the non venereal severe chronic diseases are treated with non antiseptic remedies even exactly according to the art of treatment hitherto known known these were never cured their beginning was promising the continuation less favorable and the outcome hopeless here i am to say for example if there is a tumor in the head there is headache you given belladonna according to the symptom initially it may act well and the next time when you give it will like become less effective and the further time when you give it may not respond at all because the disease is aggravating and belladonna is not having any action upon it so here you may give calcareca or silesia according to the indication they are the defecting anti myasthenic medicine then the disease will be cured so we says the previously used non antiseptic medicines that the general stood medicines were not capable enough to cure the chronic diseases so initially they may bring some palliative result for transient period but as the disease progresses it becomes ineffective so where the anti myasthenic medicine are the remedial measures origin of the concept of chronic diseases although the acute diseases even of severe character were cured by homeopathic medicines hitherto known the number of which was not meager but the chronic diseases were not cured that's why correct selection of similium in uncontestable truth of the law of similia this serious task occupied the father of homeopathy to work day and night since 1817 till the end of the year 1828 the non venereal chronic diseases after time and again removed by homeopathic medicines either to known always return in a more or less varied form and with new symptoms or reappear annually with new symptoms in order to cure the original chronic diseases the physician has to collect the whole extent of all the accidents and symptoms and administer one or more antiseptic remedy so that the disease will be cured in its whole extent and not reappear either in the same form or other once a chronic myasthenic disease affect a person then the most robust constitution the most wholesome diet the best regulated mode of living cannot overcome it till death nor will it die of itself it increases from year to year through a transition into more serious sim- symptoms for example tissues turn to insanity dried up ulcer into dropsy or apoplexy etc
On investigation, it was observed that all the non venereal current diseases have each disease at its origin. When these eruptions of which are suppressed or automatically disappear either in the knowledge of the patient or in its ignorance, then it is followed by different chronic diseases. Shora, the internal each disease, is original general maradi, which is the root cause of several non venereal chronic diseases. The thousands of different chronic diseases named in the pathology, like cutaneous eruptions, common wart on the fingers, sarcomatous tumor, malformation of fingernails, swelling of bones, curvature of spine, epistaxis, hemorrhoids, hemoptysis, hematemesis, hematuria, constipation, excessive sensitiveness, as well as deficiencies of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching, excessive as well as extinguished sexual desire, melancholy to ragging, insanity, hysteria, and hypochondria, etc., unless originated from the venereal margin or due to the abuse of allopathic medicines result from Sora, the ancient miasm of leprosy and each alone. As the cure of all patients of an epidemic disease, although they possess different symptoms which are part of the same disease, is possible by one or two remedies. Similarly, the different soric diseases are the partial manifestation of the same vast original malady Sora and can be cured by the suitable antisoric medicines. Many symptoms of different chronic diseases of soric origin are similar and cured by the same medicine. When the three chronic medicines manifest themselves through local symptoms from which most of the chronic diseases develop, these are syphilis, the venereal chancre disease, psychosis, the pre-guard disease, and Sora, the itch disease. Sora is the most ancient, most universal, most destructive, most hydrated, and yet most mis 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 misapprehended chronic miasmatic disease. It is the mother of all acute and non venereal chronic diseases. The most ancient history of the most ancient people does not reach its origin. It has increased during such an inconceivable number of years in so many millions of organisms that its secondary symptoms are hardly to be numbered. Seven eighths of all chronic diseases result from Sora alone. Primitive form of Sora in the ancient times. Moses 3400 years ago pointed out several varieties. In Leviticus, it is mentioned that a priest who has to offer sacrifice must be free from malignant itch, which is designated by the word gara. The Alexandrian translator translated it as Sora Agaria, and Vulgate translated it as Shabi Jugi. Jonathan explained it as dry is spread over the body. Moses uses the term Yelphet for lichen, tater, herpes. Kalmet, the commentator of English Bible work says, leprosy is similar to an inveterate itch with violent itching. The ancients also mention voluptuous itching, which upon itch while after uh, scratching a painful burning follows. Plato calls it as glycopatron and Cicero calls it as dulcetos cavix. Initially among the Israelites, it was on the external part of the body in the form of leprosy. It prevailed in that form in uncultivated Greece, later in Arab, and lastly in Europe during the Middle Ages. The occidental Sora during the Middle Ages was prevailing in Europe in the form of malignant erysipelas or St. Anthony's fire. Resumed the form of leprosy, which was brought back by the returning crusaders in the 13th century. The use of cotton and linen shirt, which was brought by the crusaders from the Orient, warm bath, cleanliness, more exercise, more diet, and refinement in the mode of living, moderated the external horror of Sora within a space of several centuries, so that at the end of the 15th century, it appeared only in the form of common eruption of each. Just at that time, in 1493, the other miasmatic chronic disease, syphilis, began to arise its head. Sora in the form of each eruption is easily suppressed. The eruption of each in the cultivated countries reduced to common each could easily be suppressed by bath, washes, ointments of sulfur and lead, and by preparations of zinc, copper, and mercury. The mankind thereby suffered more when it was in the form of leprosy out of its obstinate character it was confined to the external part only and the rest of the body was enjoying good health. But when each eruption is suppressed, the interior of the body suffered. Sora become more contagious and more general in each eruption form. When Sora was in the form of leprosy, 
the horrible appearance of the patient was keeping it isolated from others and these patients were kept in leper hospitals so it was not easily contaminated but the mild form of each eruption in 14th and 15th centuries when appeared as few pustules could easily be concealed when it is scratched out of unbearable itching sensation the fluid liberated from these eruptions could easily be touched by others through the different direct or indirect means thus its spread become easy it is communicated to others before applying any external repressive means like lead water and ointment of white precipitate of mercury without confessing on the part of the patient regarding the eruption and even in his ignorance of the disease the poor and lower class patient who allow the disease more time on their skin infect many local symptoms of syphilis and psychosis persist unrestricted but it is not so with soda the venereal chancre or vivo or syphilis and figuart of psychosis do not leave their local site unless they have been destroyed through external repressive remedy or in a rational manner removed through the simultaneous internal cure of whole disease by the specific internal medicines thus the secondary symptoms do not appear but this is not the case with sora even if the each eruption is not suppressed by desiccating washes sulfur ointment coughing or purgatives it frequently disappears from the skin automatically through some unlucky physical or psychical occurrence violent fright continual vexation deeply affecting grief catching a severe cold a cold temperature cold liquor and warm river baths or mineral baths fever different acute diseases through persistent diarrhea lack of activity of the skin etc this is followed by the appearance of secondary symptoms of sora each eruption hardly differs from leprosy in its essential nature leprosy in the ancient times when not inveterate could often disappear from skin by cold baths by repeated dipping in a river or by warm mineral baths the different acute diseases and insidious maladies do not fail to appear afterwards like the different secondary ailments in the modern time follow the spontaneous disappearance of violent rising out of each eruption from the skin number of chronic diseases increased to vast extent when sora become easily suppressed so many chronic diseases had not affected mankind when sora was on the external part of body that is on the skin when sora got easily suppressed from its external each eruption the mankind become the victim of so innumerable diseases effect of coffee and tea on sora coffee and chinese tea which throw their action on the sensitivity of the nerves and irritability of muscles in their primary action palliate many symptoms of sora consequently aggravate the soric symptoms in the secondary action contradiction old school physician consider each disease as local they say that every eruption each is a local element on the skin in which the remaining part of organism takes no part at all so it may be driven from skin at any time without any doubt so the local application of sulfur ointment or ointment of jasher pro sulfur fumigation by solutions of lead and zinc but most quickly by precipitate of mercury if the eruption is removed from the skin the whole disease is removed if the eruption is neglected and allowed to spread upon the skin then the malignant matter may find opportunity to insinuate itself through the absorbent blood vessels into the mass of tumors and thereby corrupt the blood the humors the health indeed man may finally suffer with ailment from these malignant tumors which might soon again be removed from the body by purgatives but the prominent but the prompt removal of the eruption from the skin prevents all sequel and internal body remains entirely healthy they dismiss the patient from their treatment by removing the each eruption for external remedy or strong purgatives they do not observe what suffering comes to the patient after this event the several varieties of chronic diseases like swelling of different parts of body pain hypochondriac and hysterical suffering gout crises paralysis caries of bones etc definitely follow the suppression of the each eruption the old school physician does not believe these diseases as consequence of local treatment of each disease he considers these diseases as new and treats it as that they are symptom discovered system discovered but the disease is aggravated and at last there occurs the death of the patient sometimes they send the patient to the disease appearing after local destruction of each eruption 
when their medicine do, does not act to sulfur bath, but this gives temporary relief, the subsequent baths become ineffective. After the local destruction of eruption, it reappears again and again. It indicates that by local destruction, it is not removed wholly. The older physicians do not consider the each disease eruption as local disease. The older physicians were more conscientious about this. They saw and have recorded the innumerable elements raised following the local destruction of each eruption. They admit that each disease results from internal disorder and treat it with internal medicines. The physical constitution and accessory circumstances determine the secondary symptoms of Sora. Rudy Christian Junkar writes the consequence of suppression of each in different types of persons. In young sanguine persons, there is produced thysis. In sanguine persons in general piles, amoroidal colic, renal gravel. In persons of sanguine of choleric temperament, swelling of immunal glands, stiffening of the joints, and malignant ulcers. In fact, persons, in fat persons, catar, mucous conjunction, inflammatory fever, acute pleurisy, inflammation of the lungs, autopsy finding so lungs with indurated and full of sheets containing pus, induration, and swelling of bones, ulcers. In phlegmatic persons, dropsy, delirvances, monthly, monthly hemoptysis. In melancholy person, insanity. In pregnant women, usually death of fetus. In some women, sterility. In nursing women, lack of secretion of milk. In some women, premature disappearance of menses. In some older women, cancer of uterus. Attendants also observe many after sufferings developing after the suppression of each. But his own method of treating each eruption by sulfurate of potash, soft soap, which he calls healing, is in no way better than any suppression. Anyman has mentioned 97 observations of the different old school physicians to show the consequence of local destruction of each eruption. Skin diseases are internal before their local manifestation. Either the skin eruption of chronic myosin or of acute disease is an internal disease before its external manifestation. But the acute diseases, after their course is over, disappear from the skin as well as from the interior of the body. On the contrary, the external manifestation on skin of the chronic miasmatic diseases do not leave the skin unless locally destroyed or disappear of itself, but the internal disease persists and grows unless healed by art. Three important moments in chronic and acute miasmatic eruptional diseases. Moment of infection. The infection with the acute or chronic miasm takes place in one single moment and that moment the one most favorable for the infection. When smallpox occurs, the infection takes place at one particular moment and thereafter it cannot be prevented. When the morbid fluid of cowpox in the bloody starch of skin comes in contact of the exposed nerves, then the disease is dynamically communicated to the vital force and thereby to the whole nervous system. After this moment, no washing, cauterization, burning, on cutting, burning or cutting of the part which has cut and received the infection can destroy or undo the development of this disease. The half acute margin after the bite of mad dog with whom soever the poison eggs, it has taken effect when the person was beaten. No washing or cutting of the part prevents it. The acute half spiritual margin, that is acute eruptive disease, also completes their course after the infection. The chronic miasmatic diseases after the initial contact are not prevented by any washing or cutting of the part. The disposition to be affected by the margin of Sura is found with everyone under all circumstances, which is not the case with other two margins. Moment of internal development. Cowpox vaccine takes three to five days from the time of vaccination till local inflammation and seven to eight days till full development of cough. Smallpox takes 10 to 12 days and measles also takes 10 to 12 days for internal development. Scarlet flu takes seven days for internal development. Hydrophobia takes several days to several weeks for internal development. Sora takes six to 14 days, syphilis seven to 14 days, and psychosis several days to several weeks for the internal development. Moment of breaking out of external element. When the internal development is computed, 
the acute eruptive disease appears on the skin with their peculiar fever. Half acute miasmatic diseases manifest the symptoms of madness, etc. The chronic miasmatic diseases manifest their local symptoms. Duration of acute and chronic miasmatic diseases. The acute miasmatic diseases with their specific fever and specific eruption are wiped out by human constitution within two to three weeks through a kind of crisis. The organism is entirely healed of them unless killed by them. Crisis means the suppression, sweating, diarrhea, etc. This is the nat naturally this your text place in this way unless treated with proper means. But the chronic miasmatic disease, once affecting the human organism, continues its action, its parasitic growth in the organism, and aggravates from year to year till the end of life, unless treated by specific anti-miasmatic similar symptom producing medicines of greater strength. Typically, it its mode of contagion, internal development, and primary manifestation. Mode of infection is by impure poison with a syphilitic person. The healthy person's genital organ, when wounded, then syphilitic miasm enters into him. If the contagion takes place, takes effect, then the whole living organism is seized with it. All washing and cleaning of the part after the impure poison is in vain. When the internal development of venereal disease is completed, then the vital force, in order to keep the interior of the organism in a soothing state, produces the venereal chancre in the genital organ. After first, uh, at first, there is produced a vesicle on the first infected spot, and later on, it turns into painful ulcer called chancre. It may require 5 to 14 days, and in rare cases, 5 weeks from the time of infection till the development of local symptoms. If the specific medicine for the disease is administered, the homeopathic specific medicine for this is Marshall, Mercury. Then the disease is cured. If the chancre is destroyed locally through the application of caustic or by cautery, then the internal disease develops to chronic venereal disease. Mode of contagion of Sura. It takes place through the touch of the fluid from primary eruption of Sura, that is, each eruption, tinea cavities, or herpes, to the general skin of a healthy person. The disposition of being effective with the margin is found in almost everyone under almost all circumstances, but this character is not found with other two margins. A physician while examining, examines patients spread it unknowingly by touching one sorry patient and then to other healthy person, washing a dress in water where each infected cloth is washed, new gloves tried by each patient, a strange lodging place a string towel or drying of oneself, a babe when being born is infected while passing through the organs of mother who may be infected with each, babe receives it from the hands of midwife who is infected, a suckling may be infected by its nature, nurse, a babe may receive it by perishes of strange person with unclean hands may spread this infection. There are several other means through which Sora is transmitted. Thus, a man who is not infected with this margin in his life is an exception. The hermit in the Mount Serat escaped it as dearly in his rocky shed as the little prince in his swaddling Pradesh of Cambridge. That means hermit who is far away from the society living in the mountainous area in the caves, he also get infected with this margin and the prince which is brought with so much care is also infected. They are not. That means there is not any person who may be escaped the infection with Sura. Is that means everybody is liable to be affected by this margin. Internal development of Sura. As soon as the margin of which touches the healthy skin, it no more remains local. Thus, any washing or cleaning of the part avails nothing. The nerve, which was first touched by the myosin, spreads the disease to whole body. It takes 6 to 14 days for the internal development of Sora when the whole organism becomes Sura. Primary manifestation of Sora. When the whole organism is saturated with Soric myosin, the vital force in order to soothe the inner part, produce eruption on the skin 
where the miasm had passed towards the skin. So long as the eruption persists on the skin, the internal sura does not produce the secondary symptoms. Before the each eruption appears, there occurs slight or severe chill in the evening, general heat, followed by perspiration in the following night. The eruption first appears at the infected spot and accompanied by voluptuously tickling itching. It compares the patient irresistibly to scratch the vesicles of each. If the person restrains himself forcibly from rubbing or scratching it, a shudder passes over the skin of the whole body. The rubbing and scratching indeed satisfies the patient for a few moments, but it is immediately followed by long continued burning sensation of the affected part. This itching is most frequent and most unbearable late in the evening and before the night. The vesicles of each contain in the first hour of their formation a leaf clean as water, but this quickly changes into pores which fill the teeth of the vesicle. This disease is most easily cured when it is time when in its primary state. Progress of Sura. The manifestation of eruption on the skin suggests the interior of the organism. As the disease is not eradicated and grows inside in order to keep the interior safe, the eruption on the skin grows proportionately and stays. The eruption finally covers the whole surface of the body. That means, as the disease progresses, the internal development of Sura becomes more and more and in order to keep the interior calm, the disease manifests on the skin and as the time passes, progresses, the skin, this disease on the skin spreads to more and more area and ultimately to the whole skin of the body. But the patient who is even in robust constitution, but the patient who is even of robust constitution cannot bear the torture of each eruption for a long time. Even if it costs his life, he tries to remove it by any means. Means, uh, means everybody is like he is not able to tolerate it. Even the most robust constitution people are not able to tolerate it. So what they do? When he seeks the advice of an allopath, he treats it with an external application. Thus, the each eruption disappears from the skin, but the real tragedy of the patient begins. The internal sura, which was latent so long as the each eruption was on the skin, become activated and produce the secondary symptoms. Earlier the treatment of sura, easy are the cure. The each eruption, while few in number, and in its early stage can be cured along with the internal sura wholly by the specific internal medicine easily. But when the eruption has spread to a larger part of the skin or whole skin and has become older, it can be cured along with the internal sura with greater difficulty. When sura has been deprived of its external skin eruption and only the secondary symptom persists in the form of deep and chronic diseases, then that is most difficult to cure. Treatment of Sora in its latent state. There are some symptoms of latent Sora basing upon which, if the antisoric treatment is done, then the patient becomes free from Sora and does not develop any manifest chronic disease in future. Symptoms of latent Sora. These symptoms are mild in intensity, so even in their presence, the patient does not feel himself as a disease and does not report to a physician. These symptoms are variable. That is, few of the Latin Suri symptoms may be present in one person at one time, and after some time, some of the previous symptoms may disappear spontaneously without treatment, and some new Latin Suri symptoms may appear in him. The presence of the different Latin Suri symptoms in a person at any specific time depends upon the disposition of the body and external circumstances of the person. Sura remains Latin in children and young person till they do not face any particular mishap from outside, have a satisfactory income, do not live in vexation or grief, do not over-exert themselves and maintain a healthy mode of living. Conversion of Latin Sura to active state. Even if the external conditions are favorable, but as the age of the person increases, the Latin Sura becomes activated. Then, a moderate cause like slight vexation, a cold, an error in diet, etc., may produce a violent attack of the disease which seems to be out of proportion to its moderate cause. This mostly happens in winter or spring. 
Even in children and adults who have latent sora, show much semblance of health. When any adverse condition appears, then the latent sora gets activated and produces one or other severe chronic diseases. The adverse condition which may activate latent sora are an epidemic fever, an acute infectious disease, smallpox, measles, scarlet fever, whooping cough, etc. For several severe external lesions like a shock, a fall, a wound, considerable burn, a breaking of an arm or a leg, a hard labor, the confinement due to disease, usually treated by incorrect and weakening allopathic treatment, confinement in a sedentary occupation in a closed room, weakening the vital force, the sad loss of beloved relatives, bending down the soul with grief, daily hexation and annoyance which, emb which embitter the life, deterioration of food or an entire want of what is necessary and indispensable, exposure and inferior food, beating down men's courage and strength, etc. But the most powerful factor that activates latent sura is the weakening and existing improper treatment by the allopathic physician. By such treatment, the chronic diseases are also aggravated from time to time without intermission unless some favorable external circumstance interpose and cause a moderation of the malady. Even if the favorable external conditions take the rapid development of the disease, but this cannot cure the disease. The disease cannot be cured also by the ordinary homeopathic treatment or by the customary allopathic treatment. Rather, you increase from your physician. There are several symptoms of secondary sora. When such symptoms reappear repeatedly or become constant, it implies that the latent sora has progressed to some chronic soric malady process possessing the symptoms of secondary sora. The symptoms of secondary sora in a patient depend upon his physical constitution, moral character, any fault education, habit, occupation, etc. You are now come to the treatment part. I have already told about the nature of chronic disease. The nature of chronic disease is that, in summarizing, I am saying, saying that the chronic disease has three important moments, that the moment of infection, moment of internal development, and moment of external manifestation. The infection takes place at any particular moment. The infection is, everybody is susceptible to get the infection with soric margin. But, this is not the case with syphilis and psychosis. Syphilitic and psychotic margin can infect a person where in the, in the time of fighters, when the genital part is injured, so that it enters. So to whom it affects, affects, it affects at that time. So thereafter, any cutting of the part, burning of the part, cleaning of the part with any means or any measure taken without proper anti treatment is in vain, the disease progresses within. And after the due period of internal development, the disease manifests on the skin. The sora manifests through each eruption, psychosyphilis through venal center, and psychosis through free guard on the genital, sometimes associated with gonorrhea. So these are the, the infection, internal development, and outer manifestation of the free margins. When these three margins are cured with their proper anti treatment, then the patient does not suffer from any consequence. It differs from the acute disease in the sense that the acute disease, after infecting a person, they also have the moment of infection, moment of internal development, moment of external manifestation. But after their due course, that is maximum in a period of two to three weeks, the disease become, the person become free from their effect completely. So there is no after effect after the affection with acute disease. But this is not the case with chronic diseases. The chronic diseases, once affect a person, they do not leave the organism. Even the most robust constitution, the best regulated mode of living, the, uh, in, uh, the precaution, several types of precaution taken cannot overcome the disease. The disease will progress from year to year and produce secondary symptoms later on. So, which are very much dangerous. So, how to cure these diseases? The treatment of 
now come to the treatment part. Cure of chronic disease. Cure of syphilis. Syphilis is the most easily curable margin. It is difficult to cure syphilis when it is com complicated with far developed soda. It is rarely complicated with psychosis. But when it is complicated with psychosis, it is at the same time complicated with soda. Syphilis cannot complicate with soda unless soda is developed. So it is when the mild treatment is given to syphilis, treatment of syphilis that is large dose of mercury, etc., then the latent soda becomes developed and the complication takes place. Primary manifestations of syphilis. Seven to fourteen days after the impure cohesion, there appears a little postule which changes into an impure ulcer with raised bodo and sting, uh, stinging pain. If uncured, it remains standing on the same place during man's lifetime, only increasing with years. The secondary symptoms of syphilis do not arise as long as it exists. Allopathic physician destroys Shankar locally. The allopathic physician consider it as a local disease having no relation with the interior, but they have no idea that when syphilis has fully developed within the vital force in order to keep the interior of the organism in a soothing state allows the genital organ to be affected. The allopathic physician thinks that as early as the sanker is exterminated locally, the whole venereal disease is cured. If the sanker is allowed to stay for a long time, then the absorbent vessels will get time to absorb the poison of the sanker and spread it to the whole of the organism through blood circulation. That means the thing that this is a local disease, so better to um, treat it locally and as early as possible so that it will not be absorbed into the interior of the organism and the organism will not suffer the consequences. So they try to remove it immediately as soon as possible through local means. When Shankar is destroyed, Vivo appears, and when Vivo is destroyed, secondary symptoms of syphilis appear. When the Shankar is destroyed locally, there appears the more painful substitute of the inter internal venereal disease, that is, Bubo, which hastens onward to suffocation. When the allopathic physician drives out this Bubo through injurious local treatment, then the troublesome secondary symptoms of syphilis appear. The secondary symptoms appear with unfailing certainty several months after the local destruction of the Bible. John Hunter says, no, not one patient out of the 15 will escape syphilis if the sanker is destroyed by mere local application. He further says, the result of destroying the sanker ever so early and even on the first day of its appearance, if this is affected by local applications, was always the consequent outbreak of syphilis. Syphilis is the port, uh, property of whole body since the moment of contagion. It is no more local, all wiping off and washing off however speedy and with whatever fluid this be done and even the excision of the part affected is too late and in and pain. Cure of syphilis at its different stages. When the venereal sanker is at its place or the vivo is in its place, the cure of syphilis is the easiest. At this stage, it is not complicated with sora. Syphilis hardly combines with latent sora in young person or with psychosis. In this stage, if a dose of best preparation of decilience degree, decilience means 30th potency of mercury is administered, then the entire syphilis along with its local symptom, that is sanka or bubo, is cured within 14 days, within a few days of taking this medicine without any external application, it turns to a clean sore with little mild pores and heals of itself. It doesn't leave behind the least scar or the least spot any other color than the other healthy skin which is convincing the proof that syphilis is entirely cured. That means when the venous chancre is cured, the chancre spot turns to the healthy spot, the healthy color of the skin is regained. But if it is not cured, it is suppressed anyhow, then there remains the scar mark in the affected part. So that indicates that syphilis is still within. But where it is cured by my application of 30th potency of mercury, or if later on required in a lower potency 
further dose then when the scar does not remain the entire skin of the effect where it was previously affecting turns to normal skin color then it indicates that the secretion is cured from within and the whole organism has become free from the impact of secretive margin and turns healthy in cases where a second or third dose of medicine that is mercury is required for the complete cure of disease then a low potency may be taken when the venereal canker or bubo has been locally destroyed in mild manner without attacking the organism with any other internal or external remedies in that case we have not to treat any developed sora because if the person is previously already in a latent soric state the mild external treatment of canker does not awaken latent sora latent sora get developed when there is a violent treatment a violent major of treatment weakening the organism but mild treatment does not make latent sora awaken to a developed sora during the time of infection with syphilis this person was also free from developed sora thus in this case we shall have to treat patient to prevent the appearance of secondary symptoms of syphilis by applying a dose of mercury the discolored spot that had existed in the locally destroyed spot of canker turns to normal color as in the skin of the surrounding part this indicates that syphilis is entirely cured when the person is infected with when the person is infected with syphilis and before which time he was already under the influence of chronic soric disease that is developed soda in that case syphilis is complicated with soda even while the canker exists the cases in which during the time of infection with syphilis soda was in a latent state in this in the person if the physician destroyed the canker locally with very painful external application and also administered internal treatment weakening the patient so that the general health of the patient is undermined thus latent soda becomes developed soda and combines with internal syphilis the medicines used for the purpose of local treatment of canker are friction with mercury large doses of calomel corrosive sublimate and mercurial remedy these medicines originate fever patient with abdominal ailments chronic exhaustion salivation pain in the limbs sleeplessness etc when syphilis combines with soda it is known as masked spurious syphilis and in england pseudo syphilis this is a monster of double disease or when the medicinal disease is added it is more than a double disease in such cases ipersulf is preferably administered first because there is excess of mercurial effect ipersulf is the best antidote to remove it and further treatment is done in combination of sora with syphilis sora is to be treated first one antisoric medicine is administered first on the basis of most similarity of symptom if any soric symptom remains after it then another antisoric remedy is administered then a dose of mercury should be administered for syphilis if still some other soric symptoms persist then another antisoric medicine is to be administered if still there remains any syphilitic symptom then another potency of mercury should be given and allowed to complete its section till the manifest venereal symptom that is ticking painful also of the tonsils the round copper colored spot that simmer shows epidermis the eruptive pimples which do not itch and are found chiefly in face upon the bluish red foundation the painless cutaneous ulcers on the scalp the and the penis which are smooth pale clean nearly covered with mucus and almost level with healthy skin and growing nightly pain in the exostosis have entirely passed away but when the discolored spot at the site of locally destroyed canker turns to normal color then that is the sure sign of entire cure of syphilis but sora syphilis and psychosis combine with each other there at first antisoric treatment is done then between syphilis and psychosis the dominant one is treated lastly the remaining one is treated if any soric symptom still remains that should be treated then if any symptom belonging to syphilis and psychosis remain that should also be treated when the discolored spot where what was locally destroyed turns to normal color then it indicates that psychosis is entirely cured cure of psychosis
primary manifestation of psychosis. Several days to several weeks after impure poison with a psychotic patient, there appears what on the genic clump penis or below the pupils, in some cases with gonorrhea. There rarely appears dry wart, but mostly soft spongy warts emitting a specifically fatty fluid, bleeding easily in the form of coxcomb or a colic on or around the purina. Local destruction of wart produces secondary symptoms of psychosis. When the wart is locally destroyed by cautery, desiccating, cutting away the part, applying caustics, etc., then the symptoms of internal psychosis develop. Bad effect of molecular treatment of psychosis. The allopathic physician confuses this disease with syphilis and treats it with internal administration of large doses of mercury. So, it undermines the patient health without curing the wart and produces similar excretions in other parts of body, which is either whitish, spongy, sensitive, clot adhesions in the cavity of the mouth, on the tongue, the palate, and the lips, or as large raised brown and dried tubercle in the axilla, on the neck, on the scalp, etc., or the contraction of tendons of flexor muscles, especially in the head. Cure of psychosis. The whole psychosis is entirely cured by internal use of fuja, a 30th potential of fuja. Few pellets of poppy seed size is to be taken at a time. When this dose has exhausted its action, after 15, 20, 30, or 40 days, a dose of nitric acid 30 is to be taken. No external application is required, except in most inverted cases of what, in which case, the juice of fuja leaf mixed with equal parts of alcohol is to be applied on the ward to moisten it. Here, Animan has given the instruction regarding external application, uh, the only case where inverted cases of ward, um, there, the fuja leaf mixed, uh, the juice of fuja leaf with equal parts of alcohol is to be administered on the local part in order to soft, make it soft. The disappearance of the discolored spot at the site of local destruction. That means when the when fig wart is not cured by internal medicine, rather destroyed locally, there remains a discolored scratch in the affected part. And when proper anti-psychotic treatment is done with puja and nitric acid, then that discolored spot also disappears and turns to completely healthy skin. It indicates that psychotic, psychotic margin is completely removed from the human organism and turned to healthy. If further doses of fuja is required for cure of the case, it should be administered in a low potential. Now come to the treatment of Shora, cure of Shora. When a healthy person comes in contact of a patient suffering from the each eruption, pinea capis or herpes, these are the three primary manifestations of Shora, that is each eruption tinea capitis and herpes. And the fluid from uh, any of these eruptions touches the healthy skin of the unaffected person. Then, at the moment of the touch with this fluid, the person as a whole becomes the victim of the disease. That means, the moment the fluid coming out of this primary eruption touches the skin of a healthy person, then the healthy person get infected with that myosin at that moment itself. No cleaning, cutting, or any measure taken prevents this infection. The infection continues to grow internally for the internal development, and the, when the internal development becomes complete, then the eruption of each appear in the first touched part of the skin, that is in the external manifestation. In case of each disease, it takes 6 to 14 days time within which it is developed within. After that period, the vital force in order to protect the internal organism allow the skin to be affected because the vital organs like heart, lungs, liver, brain, etc. are important for the survival of the human organism. So, the vital force instinctually allows the skin that is the least important part of the body to be affected by this disease. So, where it appears? The spot where it has touched the human organism and entered to the internal organism at that external part, that means the touch part of the skin become affected with the primary manifestation of each. That means the each eruption appears at the first, at the 
past coming in contact of the part of the diseased person. In case of each disease, it takes six to fourteen days time within which it develops within. After that period, the vital force in order to protect the internal organs allow the skin to be effective. But the allopathic physician who does not know that the each disease before its local manifestation had already affected the whole organism treats it locally. The basic con- difference between the concept of allopathy and homeopathy regarding the each disease, the venereal disease, is that they consider the each disease, venereal canker, figua, or the local diseases having no relation with the internal of the organism. But the homeopathic physician thinks it in the other way. The homeopathic physician thinks that the each disease or venereal canker or figua disease are the diseases of the whole organism. They are not the local diseases. The moment they come in contact with the affected person or the diseased person, at that moment they become infected. Then the internal development starts. Then, after the completion of the internal development, they are developed the external manifestation. The, the vital force, in order to keep the interior of the body safe, it allows the external part of the body. In case of sora, it allows the skin to be affected. And in case of syphilis and psychosis, the genital organ is the manifestation of the primary symptom, that means venereal canker and fever. So, the homeopathic physician does not destroy it locally. But on the other hand, the allopathic physician thinks that they are the local diseases, then as soon as they are removed after their primary manifestation, it is safe for the internal organism. If they are allowed to stay on the skin or the genital organ for a long time, then the impure matter of the disease will be absorbed into the blood and the interior of the organism and the internal organism will become affected more and more. So they try to remove it locally by the different ointments, by coating or cleaning or desiccating, I mean drying powder, which will make it dry. So that measures they take. After that period, the vital force in order to protect the internal organ, allow the skin to be affected, but the allopathic physician who does not know that the ear disease before its local manifestation has already affected the whole organism, treats it locally, following the local destruction of which that develops the secondary symptoms of sure. The original eruption of each is most easily cured. The original eruption of each is most easily cured entirely, quickly, and permanently by specific internal medicine. The eruption of each disease is not constant. Here, I want to say that the manifestation of syphilis and psychosis, the primary manifestation of that is venereal canker, and primary manifestation of psychosis, that is figua, only and until they are destroyed by local means or coating or whatever means or unless and until they are cured by their proper medicine, that is syphilis with mercury and psychosis with nitric acid and fuja, they remain there unless they are locally destroyed or unless cured. But this is not the case with Sora. The primary manifestation of Sora, in many cases also, they do not, it doesn't remain on the local part. It automatically disappears from the skin either due to the lack of the susceptibility of the skin to retain it for a long time or due to other circumstances like exposure to severe cold, river bathing or uh, grief, sorrow or etc. Many, there are several causes which causes the spontaneous disappearance of the uh, local manifestation of the soric symptom that is each eruption. Even if the each eruption, even if the eruption of each disease is not suppressed, it disappears of itself from the skin and affects the internal part. So, when the primary manifestation of each disappears itself without the internal cure, as the sora remains in the interior of the human organism, then the internal symptoms develop. That means the person may develop asthmatic symptoms, the person may develop diarrhea, the person may develop uh, insanity. The internal organs become the victim of the disease. So, as the disease is not cured, the several internal symptoms relating to the internal organs and parts of the body appear in him and they progress from year to year unless and until proper antisoric treatment cures this. It easily disappears from the skin. This eruption which appears subsequently is due to internal sura. The treatment which is done for it is to cure the internal sura. By treatment, if this, is, if this eruption disappears because of its inconstant nature, we cannot become sure that the soric margin is entirely cured or not. 
But when primary eruption of Sora disappears on the treatment, it is a sure sign that Sora has been cured. Sometimes what happens after the primary or the initial manifestation of Sora, uh, the each eruption um, persists in the skin for some time. Then it uh, either is persists for a long time, unless even if it is not cured by proper treatment, it often disappears and the Sora remains in the interior organ. And in such situation, there also appears the reappearance of the skin symptoms the second time. And such reappearance of the skin eruption is also not of constant nature. It also frequently disappears later on. And again, the internal symptoms of the secondary sorry symptom are manifesting from time to time. Any eruption on the skin should not be suppressed. Some physicians say from the description of the patient that it was impossible on their part to recognize the eruption presently in the patient. So they treat the eruption by local application, but that is a wrong procedure. Whatever the eruption is, each or any other eruption, as it appeared on the skin, and the skin is a part of the whole organism, so every skin disease should be treated by internal administration of a medicine which is cure only. That means this, some physicians get excuse that they do not know regarding the internal nature of the disease with eruption, so they keep treat it locally. But they should know that the disease before its external infection is developed internally, and so it is a manifestation of the whole organism, so it should not be treated locally, rather for internal medicine, which will treat the whole patient. Sulfur is the remedy for primary eruption of each in children. When a person, especially a child, suffers from primary manifestation of each disease, then a dose of potential sulfur consisting of one or two globules of proficient size is sufficient to cure each eruption with entire sora. Sulfur, carbohydrate, and sepia are the remedies for each eruption in adults. According to the symptoms, either sulfur or carbohydrate or sepia is to be selected for the cure of soric eruption, but in majority of cases, a single dose of sulfur is sufficient to cure each eruption within four weeks. Large weights of sulfur are harmful. Sulfur has its reputation in controlling each disease, but if it is administered in large doses internally, then it acts violently. The vital force in order to overcome it produces revolutionary changes like diarrhea. So the power of large weights of sulfur cannot be utilized in cure of the disease. Sulfur ointment, bathing in sulfur strings, also act as a suppression of the each eruption, which is followed by several secondary symptoms of Sora. Sora, when in secondary stage, requires more than one antisoric remedy for the cure. The cure of Sora that has been deprived of its eruption, whether it may be latent or already broken out into chronic disease, can never be accomplished with sulfur alone or with sulfur bath. The matter is that syphilis is cured by mercury alone, psychosis by puja in alteration with nitric acid. But this is not the case with Sora. Sora is the most ancient margin which has passed through several millions of years with millions of human organisms of different bodily constitution, different education, different habit, different mode of living. Its secondary symptoms are so harsh that it cannot be covered by sulfur alone. So, Sulfur alone may not cure the whole extent of Sora in every patient. So there are many antisoric medicines so, which are to be administered after one after another according to the existing totality of the symptom taken from time to time subsequently after the one phase of the previous administered medicine is over. That means our, the totality symptom indicates phosphorus. We have administered of phosphorus. And Later on, you will take after sufficient time is over, you may find the symptom may indicate um, another medicine may like a podium. You shall have to give that so that it may be cured. If still it is not cured, some symptom remaining, you may have to give Kalkarekar and a time will come, the entire Sora can be cured. So the second symptoms of Sora require more than one antisoric remedies because the symptoms of secondary Sora is too vast as Sora has passed through millions of human organisms in several thousands of generations of different bodily constitution 
education, occupation, mode of living, habit, domestic and social relations, moral conduct, etc. The question arises why it is not the case with separation psychosis. Separation psychosis are the diseases which have affected mankind since last few hundred years, but this is not the case with Chora. Chora is existing since several years, thousands of years. Diet and mode of living during antisoric treatment. Any factor that hinders the cure should be removed as the treatment is continued for a long time. So, the rule of diet and regimen should not be very strict. A strict diet and regimen does not cure, but the proper medicine cures. Many allopathic physicians raise the question that homeopathic treatment does not cure, rather a strict diet and regimen cures. But in order to counteract it, counter this argument, Animan had given uh, placebo to some patients with strict diet and regimen and they were not cured, rather their disease aggravated. On the other hand, to the other group of person whom he had given anti-myosmatic treatment, they were cured of chronic disease. It indicates that a strict diet and regimen does not cure, rather anti-myosmatic cure or anti treatment cures the patients of chronic diseases. So, as the chronic diseases affecting different people who are of different age, even there are pretty old people who are accustomed with several things like drinking tea, drinking wine or uh, taking alcohol, tobacco, etc. Uh, or doing several works which are not congenial to their health. So, a strict treatment regimen cannot be followed. So, we should be liberal to some extent. The daily labor should continue his labor as his strength. The farmer, his field work, and the housewife are domestic work. Persons doing sedentary work should work in open air. Persons belonging to higher classes should work more. Means higher class persons are usually sedentary in their habits. So they should do more physical work. They may allow moderate innocent amusement, attend meetings with acquaintances. This here. The amusement should not be more and it should be strictly restricted when there is a mental patient. So their amusement should not be, should be strictly restricted. But in case of physical ailments, the amusement may be moderate. Innocent, moderate amusement, attend meetings with acquaintances where conversation is the chief amusement. Means the meetings which are very much strenuous should be avoided, where light discussion, like which does not put more pressure upon the mind, such meetings can be allowed. Where converse in the chief amusement, enjoy harmless music, listening lectures, which are not too much fatiguing. The visit of theatre may be permitted exceptionally, but playing card is totally restricted. That means it is harmful. Playing card should be should not be allowed. Driving and riding should be moderate. Nutrition and empty excitation of sensuality between sexes and reading of indelicate novels and poems, superstitious and enthusiastic books are to be restricted. Sexual intercourse should be allowed. Sexual intercourse should be allowed in the sense that it gives relief to many mental symptoms and also gives the lightness to the body and helps in cure of many diseases. The persons which are sexually infirm, that means where there is weakness of sexual power, the antisoric treatment cures that and promotes the good performance of the sexual behavior. It simultaneously helps in the cure. So, the physician should not restrict the patient for sexual behavior or sexual act. That rather it should be allowed. Scholars are advised to moderate exercise in open air and bad weather to do light mechanical indoor work. Mental occupation should be limited, but in mental diseases, no mental occupation is allowed. Any domestic medicine must not be used. It is frequently observed that many patients who are coming for uh, uh, treatment of chronic diseases use some local medicine like the flachurn or some other medicines. Such treatment with domestic medicine should not be allowed because they interfere with the action of the medicine. Nor should the patient take medicine according to his own will. Perfumes, scented water, tooth powder and other medicines for the teeth must be forbidden. Wooden under cloth 
should be replaced by cotton in warm weather and then to widen it. Woolen dress should not be allowed and in the cold weather it should be warm and when the weather becomes warm it should be replaced by cotton and linen thereafter. Any customary home bath, many section and copying is not allowed. Onion and paper should be restricted in diet. Coffee should not be drunk. Those who want to drink a substitute for coffee, they may drink rye or wheat roasted like coffee in a drum and then boiled and prepared like coffee which both in smell and taste resembles coffee. Chinese tea which allows the nerves and weakens these should not be drunk. Those who are accustomed to drink pure wine, they should at first for one week drink it by mixing with equal quantity of water and later on one part of wine mixed with two, three and four and finally six parts of water and a little sugar. Whiskey and brandy should be avoided. Beer which contains the extraction of malt to tackle the palate and intoxicate must not be allowed. That means if one is accustomed with wine for several long period of time, which seems long, then it should be diluted and similar phenomena should be for which it is better to avoid whiskey. But if it is unavoidable in its part, it should be taken in the diluted form also. Vinegar and citric acid should be restricted, especially in patients with nervous and abdominal ailments. They either antagonize or increase the action of several medicines. Sour fruits are restricted, sweet fruits are allowed in moderate amount. Those having weak sex power should limit the intake of young chicken, egg and irritating spices. Ladies having scanty menses should avoid saffron and cinnamon. Persons with weak digestion should avoid cinnamon, cloves, pepper, ginger and bitter substances. The vegetables causing flatulence should be avoided in all abdominal troubles and constipation. The flesh and fat of goose and dog should be permitted very less. Pickled and smoked meat should be rarely used. Pickling chops, raw heart or so on soup, putting pot heart into vegetables and eating old rancid cheese must be avoided. Fresh, boiled and less spiced fish may be taken. Pieces dried in air or smoked salt fish may be taken rarely. Those who are accustomed with tobacco, if they do not expectorate, expect means they, if they do not suffer from pulmonary thysis, nor suffer from sleeplessness, abdominal, abnormal mental activity, defective digestion or constipation, then it may be permitted. If the person suffers from constipation and the bowel motion takes place after smoking, then it should be replaced by anti treatment. So, for this constipation, the sulfur is the best medicine. Next to sulfur is lycopene. Snuff must not be used. Factors hindering the cure of chronic diseases: excessive hardship, great bodily injury, wounds, excessive cold or heat, unsatisfied hunger, poverty, unwholesome food, uninterrupted grief and vexation are the factors which not only hinder the cure of sura but also stimulate latent sura to its development. That means. If such hardships are appearing in the life of the person, then the Latin Sura turns to develop said, and the those who are under the anti treatment, in them the cure is not promoted, rather they act as obstacle for the cure. This means excessive hardships, bodily injuries, wounds, excessive cold, heat, unsatisfied hunger, poverty, unwholesome food, all these they are precipitating Sura, uh, either make the Latin Sura develop or hinder the cure of the chronic disease. Uninterpreted grief, vexation, etc. All these things. Uninterpreted griefs and vexation very soon increases even the smallest trace of slumbering sura into severe chronic illness. The physician should advise the patient and his relative to remove the cause of this. Treatment of artificial chronic disease. Use of mineral bath and treatment with unsuitable heroic medicine substances make the soric disease more incurable. The prolonged use of heroic in approval medicine to the sensitivity and the sensitivity and irritability of the different parts of the body produce induration, ulceration and callosity in different parts of the body. When sura is already present in such patient, then appropriate antiseptic treatment is done. The vital force overcomes the artificial chronic disease in a long time. Another difficulty in the cure of sura is the sura is one latent condition in a person who acquires syphilis. 
the perverted treatment of syphilis the way um, as we can see latin sora to develop trait in this case the vital force resists the impression of the anterior treatment with difficulty in the treatment of chronic diseases affinity affinance from sexual intercourse is another the hypochondriac melancholy are benefited and easily cured by anterior treatment when the sexual intro on usual usual sexual act is allowed treatment of new infection of each when the former eruption is previously suppressed when the eruption of each is already suppressed previously and now the eruption appears new then the treatment of the new eruption not only cures the treatment recent eruption but also previously existing internal sora the same phenomena is observed for venereal canker when the canker was suppressed previously and it again appears a new then the best condition of one dose of mercury can cure not only the recent case of canker but also previously suppressed syphilis treatment of established chronic diseases if all symptoms appear the medicine should be disturbed should not be disturbed when antiseptic medicine is selected based upon the symptom similarity and an insufficient suitable dose and potency then medicine continues its action during the period of symptom during during this period if the symptom like headache or any other moderate ailment appears then the physician should not at once administer medicine for these moderate ailments if these moderate ailments are previously present in the patient then such symptoms are the homeopathic the excitation to the medicine and indicates that the medicine is and acting more deeply and will affect the in future the medicine should be allowed to continue its action without any interruption if the symptom belonging to the medicine appear uh, it should not be allowed further if the symptoms that appear during the action of the antiseptic medicine were not previously present in the patient but belonging to the already administered medicine that indicates that the medicine which is administered is wrongly selected in such a case the antidote of the medicine is to be administered or if no antidote is known then no suitable antiseptic medicine best suited to the totality of symptoms of the patient is to be administered in homeopathic aggravation of chronic and chronic diseases in this the original symptom of the disease are aggravated for one or few hours 6 8 10 12 or 14th day after taking medicine every subsequent aggravation is less and less in intensity finally there is no aggravation but continuous aggravation when the dose of the medicine is large and every subsequent aggravation is of higher and higher intensity in such case although medicine is appropriate but it produces an artificial disease similar to the symptom of medicine which is similar to original disease thus it cannot be cured it cannot cure the original disease in such case the medicine should be antidoted and if antidote is not known then another suitable antiseptic medicine should be administered in a moderate dose but if this is not sufficient to extinguish the injurious medicinal disease then other still suitable antiseptic medicine which is homeopathic to the present symptom should be administered after the effect of the two large dose is an uh, antiseptic medicine is overcome which had proved hurtful due to the large dose may again be administered in a smaller dose in a higher potency if the symptom of that medicine are still present three errors done by the physician during homeopathic treatment one is administration of large dose of medicine second wrong choice of remedy or hastiness of administration of dose without allowing each dose of to exhaust its action the duration of action of medicine depend upon the nature of the disease the antiseptic medicine in chronic diseases act for long period in acute diseases the period of the action of the same medicine is shorter therefore in chronic diseases the physician should allow 30 40 or 50 days or more than that period so long as the improvement continues after administration of dose of antiseptic medicine in this period the same medicine is not repeated nor is any new medicine administered conditions requiring repetition of the dose if any favorable effect appears after taking the present dose of the remedy that is trouble and symptom which do not belong to the disease and if the mind of the patient become depressed then the next dose of the same medicine given immediately after the former cannot become injurious to the patient when the dose of the well selected medicine is administered but its action is quickly exhausted in that case it requires immediate repetition of the same medicine but such a case rarely occurs in chronic diseases it frequently occurs in acute diseases when the dose of the medicine after 14 and uh, reduces reduce the ha uh, sir sari gal sari gal ha sari gal sir ha uh, jaldi jaldi sir when the dose of the right medicine is distorted in reaction to a grave error in regimen patient then the same medicine may be administered in different potency by changing the potency the vital force shifts its impression more easily in freshly arisen eruption of each if the erup- if the repetition of dose becomes necessary when sulfur is already administered 
then it may be administered in a different potency. In between the doses of sulfur, as the symptoms of the patient may vary, so either a dose of buffer sulfur or nocturnica or mercury may be administered. If these medicines require repetition, then it should be administered in a change potency. In chronic diseases, after administration of antiseptic remedy, the symptoms being, begin to change so that usually the same medicine does not require repetition. Some other antiseptic is subsequently administered for complete cure. But the cases of diseases which are mismanaged by allopathic treatment, it is nearly always necessary to give again from time to time during the treatment a dose of sulfur or hypersulfur according to the symptom, even the patient who has been before posed with large dose allopathic disease of sulfur with sulfur bath, but then only after a previous dose of mercury. Immediate improvement after the first dose of medicine is doubtful on the cure of the disease. So it indicates a palliative treatment, so it should, it should not be allowed. Use of mesmerism in mismanaged cases. If physician in a chronic case frequently changes the antiseptic remedy, it indicates that the physician is, has not been able to select the correct medicine. This also happens in treatment of acute disease. So in such case, mesmerism is to be given to, uh, to soothe the overaction of overactivity of the body out of the mismanaged case. Inhalation of medicine moderates the action. The action of the dose of the homeopathic medicine may be moderated by allowing the patient to smell a small palate moistened with remedy. So inhalation gives a immediate soothing effect and acts superficially. So if any person suffers from any misa, like in the treatment of chronic disease, if person suffers from diarrhea or indigestion from overeating, etc. In such cases, inhalation of the non antiseptic medicine Gross inhalation gives a good result. It, its action is easily overcome and the antiseptic treatment is not disturbed much. Sugar of milk should be given to the patient of chronic disease for their satisfaction. When patient demands for medicine every day, because they are accustomed with the allopathic treatment, taking large doses of medicines every day, so their psychology is not satisfied by minimum, minimum dose of medicine. So Hanuman says, that they should be given three grains of sugar of milk daily and this gives satisfaction to them and their disease cure. Management of the effect of palliative medicine. There is treatment of chronic disease. If any medicine immediately relieves the symptom, then it is a palliative remedy. Such medicine should be immediately antidoted. Management of mishap during antiseptic treatment. I've already told. Management of epidemic and sporadic diseases during antiseptic. During the appearance of such disease, Antiseptic treatment is interrupted. The suitable non antiseptic medicine should be administered um, in the inhalation part. Chlora is the origin of epidemic intensive cure. So, according to the symptom, the patient either a do dose of sulfur or repor sulfur is to be administered by inhalation at the beginning of such treatment. After a few days, non antiseptic medicine for intermittent cure should be administered. After the epidemic or sporadic disease is over, the antiseptic treatment should be continued. Symptom of chronic disease changes after the epidemic of sporadic disease. Symptoms of the original chronic disease is somewhat changed after the attack of the epidemic, sporadic disease. So the physician should not immediately simply administer the antiseptic medicine, which is previously intended to be administered. He should record the symptom of the present test and select the suitable antiseptic. That means if sulfur was, a, uh, was selected to be administered before the appearance of the uh, acute disease, that is the epidemic disease or sporadic disease, and the Rostox was administered for this epidemic or sporadic disease, then so after the action of Rostox and cure of the epidemic of disease, the same indication for sulfur may not be there. It may be for lycopodium or calcarca. So the, after the epidemic of sporadic disease is over, recast taking should be done, and what medicine is indicated, that should be administered. Acquiring of Latin Sora after epidemic disease. Those persons who suffer from epidemic but are not under antiseptic treatment. In such persons, if sora was already latent, then it becomes developed and a chronic disease starts. In some persons, after the epidemic, there appears in each like direction. As the epidemic and sporadic disease fever mm -hmm. belong to miasmatic acute disease, if these do not soon terminate and pass directly over into good health, then they often need to antiseptic treatment. Sulfur usually becomes helpful in such cases. Those who stay in March area and after their removal to dry area remain uncured. Despite use of China, they require antiseptic treatment. The symptoms dis disappear in reverse direction in antiseptic treatment. 
that means the symptom appear last or going fast and symptom of the oldest symptom go last maintaining of case record the uh, those patients who stay at long distance which and should unscore once below the symptom which during the treatment appear after considerable some time we should unscore twice below the symptom which are felt for the first time the former symptom indicate that the medicine is acting favorably and the later on to do as the epidemic and spread of fever belong to asthmatic excuse me sir sir please conclude the time has over okay thank you sir mm -hmm. Few lines. The pregnancy does not admit to some anti-seizure medicine to women. Relation with menstrual menstrual medicine should not be given during menstrual period. If there is profuse bleeding, noxious gas in 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 the form of inhalation should be given on the fourth day and after five six days the anti-seizure medicine should be given. If the patient is very sensitive, having having profuse menstrual bleeding, and its medicine should be given after seven to two hours and following four five days, the second med the anti-seizure medicine should be given. listen pregnancy is not an obstacle during pregnancy many symptom appear and those who are not having such activity during the healthy period the symptom appear in the pregnancy or vice versa may occur so when medicine is anti-seizure treatment is given during pregnancy it is uh, curing many mal presentation prepares the mother for breastfeeding it cures many um, diseases of the uh, child in the or the fetus Uh, so healthy fetus, healthy child is probability of healthy child is there. Addition of medicine shocking. Those who are taking mother's mm -hmm. milk, the medicine should be given to child, yes, sorry mother, so that it can act gently and quickly through mother's milk. No other palliative measure is to be adopted during anti-seizure treatment. The palliative medicine should not be given. The spark galvanizing shock should not be given to the paralyzed person. Those who are having constipation, that should be administered blister of Uh, pure water means a dose of um, wa water should be given for the anus and sulfur is good medicine and next sulfur like to give preferable thank you your suggestion is valuable to us so thank you sir good sir now i would like to request professor dr mehta principal rajpur homepath medical college to give concluding remarks mehta sir uh, hello you may follow this book written by me this is the hanimans book this is uh, the chronic disease their peculiar nature and their homeopathic cure this is the original book and those who are beginners who are feeling difficulty having less patience they may go to this beginners the theory uh, theory of chronic disease for beginners this is my compilation and there are many cases present in this book scope and limitation of homeopathy and the removal of fundamental cause is essential like that so many things are there they one may follow it when agent when required so i am extremely thankful to the organizers to hina madam to dr mehta to dr vp um, konda who has given me chance i am sorry for it is a bit delayed because the topic is vast and it gives a basic concept to the beginner for they are um for their practice it is highly essential because so it has been lengthen lengthened a bit than the time given to me so i may pard i may be pardon for this thank you all thank you very much sir for your uh, wonderful uh, knowledge which you have shared today and uh, so regarding the concluding remarks of today's webinar uh, the topic itself is a very important for the concept of the animalian concept of the organon the nature of the chronic disease and their treatment so sir has started with the uh, uh, two compartment that is nature of chronic disease and their treatment uh, how to treat the chronic disease in order to treat the chronic disease the treatment of the latent sora which is very essential there are certain factors which is which uh, resulting or which excites the uh, sora that is diet faulty food habits taking cold changes Uh, changing atmosphere so we have to consider all the factor which excite the latent sora and role of non anti soric remedy which is very essential in order to 
treat the chronic diseases origin of the concept of the chronic disease how it has been uh, uh, cultivated in a given case so we being a physician we have to identify whether it is the gradual onset whether it is structural pathology which has been established primitive form of sora in the ancient time that is itching hebrew language itching of sora sora become more contagious and more general in form of the itching uh, number of the chronic disease which has been increasing to a vast extent effect of the coffee stimulant that is tea all school of the physician consider each as a uh, uh, disease disorders so skin disease are internal before their local manifestation the three important moments which is very essential moment of infection moment of internal development mode of contagion of sora that is cure of the chronic disease that is cure of syphilis allopathic physician destroyed the sanker locally when sanker destroyed the bubo appears so being a uh, homeopath uh, it uh, chronic disease is com uh, combining of the sura psychosis and syphilis so we have to treat antisoric uh, first of all we have to identify the responsible uh, soric miasm and we have to treat according and give antisoric medicine for sora that is sorainum sulfur for psychotic thuja medorinum causticum uh, syphilitic cephalinum uh, nitric acid marxol nicely explained by the sir so in order to treat any chronic disease we have to identify responsible miasm as per attributes of different miasm and existing totality of the symptoms in terms of the knowledge of organon that is nicely integrated with the knowledge of materia medica so thank you very much sir for your wonderful knowledge and it is the duty of the physician to understand with the unprejudiced observation thank you sir so uh, i invite uh, dr dp panda sir principal of the parol institute of homeopathy research to give vote of thanks over to dr panda sir thank you meeta sir i feel proud and it is my pleasure to give vote of thanks to the today's speaker dr himan surat sir really extensively he has presented the chronic miasm all chronic miasm mentioned by hanimen from mode of onset to development and their secondary manifestation their treatment what are the auxiliary treatment what are the precaution so and thankful sir for sparing time for our students as well as our fraternity and give them such a uh, vast knowledge about the miasm and the treatment i am very much thankful to our management dr devan supatil sir director komal madam for giving this platform to conduct this webinar in this crisis for our students as well as for the fraternity i am very much thankful to my colleagues dean dr purat sir principal uh, uh, principal jawaharlal uh, nehru homeopathy medical college dr hina rawal madam principal ahmedabad homeopathy medical college and dr mehta sir principal rajkot homeopathy medical college for their cooperation and that by which we are able to conduct such type of webinar series in this crisis period i am very much thankful to the team of logistic team who are supporting us to conduct this seminar without any hindrance and the, uh, without any technical problem dr uh, mr bridges acharya sir then we i am very much thankful to all the viewers to join uh joining joining here and taking the opportunity and gaining the knowledge which is helpful for the society thank you all now we should end the uh, webinar thank you very much thank you sir namaskar sir rat sir thank you very much for sparing time